Hello everybody. So around my neck I have two different gas masks, but both are quite similar and I wanted to do a video where I looked at masks that are very similar to each other but one is clearly better than the other through sort of clever design choices and just minor details. So I have the French M51 in this bag, I think I might have the Belgian export version, but regardless it's the same mask. And in this one I have the Swiss SM67. Now if this was a Swiss SM74 it would look a lot more like the M51, but it's fundamentally a very similar mask. So first let's look at the French one. And a lot of you have heard me complain about this mask before. This mask is a bit of a shame because there's lots of great things about it, but there's a couple of major drawbacks that mean you know a lot of the mask that should be good is ruined. Okay, so here's the mask. It's made out of quite a soft, comfortable rubber, but the head strap system is really weird. You can tighten the straps at the top and the sides of it, but not at the bottom. And on the bottom, it hooks on with these um, sort of little hooks. So it's a mask that sort of, I mean, it looks like you can sort of tighten it there. You can, because there's a buckle, but you can't tighten it in a way that I think would you know, serve the mask very well. So it's a weird strap system is what I'm really trying to say. It does have one of these though, uh, so you can pop that round your neck as well. Now this mask is fundamentally incredibly simple. You have an inhale valve coming through there. It does have Tissot tubes on both sides, so that's a plus, so it doesn't really fog up, or you can at least defog it when you breathe. Um, uh, but the weak point, as I've said in all my videos regarding this mask, is under this cover is the exhale valve. That is a very flimsy rubber that can break very easily. I mean, in theory, you could repair it. People have said, like, you know, they've taken GP5 rubber and done it with that. You could just get a bit of rubber cut it to shape and repair it. But it's kind of a shame that they went to a lot of effort with some parts of the mask, like the rubber on here, and then they cut the rubber so thin there that it was, you know, a weak point of the mask. Um, obviously, these weren't intended for use in service as long as they were in service, but that was more of a problem with French... Um, military funding than anything else. So, I'll pop the mask on. Just make sure I get the hooks out from under my head. Okay, and then I get these hooks over to each of the hooks. And then this is a really stupid strap system in my opinion. Point them to try to come up with something original, but they didn't really succeed. There we go. So, it's on tight enough it's got an airtight seal. I can f see fairly well about out of it. Not much downwards, but upwards and sideways I can see fairly well. So the mask is cheap. It does its job. You know, and it's, I guess, fairly effective for what it is. I said it's just a shame that the exhale valve is just pure crap. Uh, but it does defog when I inhale. No inner mask, so it fogs up. Uh, no wall or nasal cup, I mean, but if you put some um, anti-dim paste on the inside, you'd probably find it wouldn't fog up very much and it would completely clear every time you inhale. At the moment, it completely clears every time I inhale, but it does fog up quite a lot on exhaling. So anyway, that's the French M51. So, what I'm going to show you now is the Swiss SM67. And I will demonstrate to you how that other mask... Uh, despite looking very similar, works a lot better. So, here is the Swiss, uh, Swiss SM67. And let me just do a side-by-side -side comparison with the other mask. So, this one takes the filter there, so it's still kind of downwards, but with this one it's more at the front than actually completely at the bottom. But, you see, both masks have a very similar profile. Uh, the exhale valve on this one goes straight down, as I said, with the Swiss SM74 it's actually on the nose area, more similar to the M51, but both masks fundamentally have quite a similar design. Now, let's look at what makes this ma mask better. Firstly, it's got proper um, fabric straps, you know, the stretchy sort of elastic ones that are both comfortable and work. Um, you've got an actual chin rest in there so your chin doesn't go too far into the mask and one of the things I really like with this mask is how it's shaped the eyes sit very close to your eyes so you get the best field of view possible but that also prevents some fogging because this doesn't have any sort of Tissot system or anything like that I've got some anti-dim paste on the inside but you probably think how does this mask work well without that? Oh it's simply because the mask sits so well to your face it doesn't need any of those things so I'll put it on and do the straps up
Okay, so what you'll have seen now is I've just done a cut while I was adjusting the straps. But this mask very interesting. I'll just pop the filter on it for sake of, um, you know, the video. My vision's a bit steamed up, but that's not actually where it's steamed up. It's the sort of whatever type of fat or synthetic chemical they use for the anti-dim stuff. Oh, there we go. Very easy filter to put on as well, even though this isn't the Swiss filter, it's a British one, but where the actual port is. So, the mask sits so well to your face that my nose is like under the eye section. I'm sure if I got the straps even tighter, you know, the eyes again would be even closer to my head. Um, so I'll just try and do that. But Yeah, so what I like with this mask is that the eyes, I could actually even do that one tighter as well, sit very close to my eyes because the shape of the mask you know, fits the human face very well. I mean, obviously it will depend a bit on how your uh, face is shaped, but what this means is how the mask is shaped, it sits very well in comparison to your face. This one doesn't as much, but like I said, the main fault of that is the exhale valve. But what I'm saying is you can take a mask like this, you can make the shape sit slightly better to your face, and then you almost don't need a defogging system because it won't fog up because the hot air is trapped in the lower section of the mask, the inhaling and exhaling is purely down this end, not the top end. So, I said this is a very clever design for a mask, and I really like it. It's one of those masks that seems primitive, but it's been cleverly thought out. I guess that's very Swiss, you know, they've gone to extreme lengths to engineer something very well. So, hopefully this video is sort of can I get that off without undoing the straps? Just about. So hopefully this video has pointed out how you can have two masks that are conceptually very similar, but due to clever design choices you can have something that's much better, you know, with one than the other. As said, if I had the SM74 it would look closer to this M51. Again, I don't mean to keep shitting on this mask because it is... I kind of like it, it's just... It's a real shame that they couldn't have done a better exhale valve. Um, you know, and maybe put a very primitive oral nasal cup in. But as it stands, yeah, it was adequate when it was made. It's just the French kept them in service for far too long and didn't make new ones or replace them. But, you know, there you go. So the point of the video was that you can have two very similar design masks, but somebody, if they're, you know, competent enough, can improve upon the design and make something far better. Like I was saying in the other video with the American M9 and the Finnish M61s, how the Finnish M61s had the sort of things that made them both more comfortable and made a better airtight seal, just with some, you know, very small changes made to the masks. But there you go, that's how you can have two masks, but one can be far better with very little changes.